an engaging new series of life-changing teachings today on Fixing the Money Thing. Fear is an enemy to your life. It is an absolute enemy and should be cast aside. Fear is not part of the kingdom of God. It is not part of your future. It is a lie. Darkness isn't your problem. It's the fear of darkness that's your problem. And fear is going to hold you hostage to your destiny. It's going to hold you. It's going to hold you hostage. You've got to overcome it. What are you scared of? Is courage available? Where can you find it? Find out today on Fixing the Money Thing. I always say, if you don't deal with fear, it will deal with you. There's not enough deadbolts you can buy in the world to stop fear. Fear is not part of the kingdom of God. It is not part of your future. It is a lie. You don't have to be afraid because God is with you. Light always wins over darkness, and you are not of the kingdom of darkness. You're of the kingdom of light. Today's message, Faith Over Fear. Is fear holding you hostage? We're talking about what? Fear. Fear is permeates the culture. You were raised with fear, right? And uh, you have to learn how to handle fear, or ha fear will handle you. And so through this series, we're going to tell you how to deal with fear, how to walk out of fear, how to be free, and how to overcome, reach your destiny. So just hang with this, but we're going to dig into that uh, today. Psalms 23, we're going to start in a very familiar uh, passage for you. Psalms 23, verse 4. Get your Bibles out, your iPads, your iPads, or iPhone. How are you taking notes? Just get them out. I always tell people, you don't have a screen like this in your bedroom at night. You've got to know where the Scripture's at. So you need to find it. However you read the Bible, you need to know where it's at. Psalms 23, verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. Why? Why? You are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You think of a shepherd, rod and the staff. The staff leads, the rod keeps that... Little sheep moving in the right direction, away from that cliff, you know, just, no, this way, no, no, this way, all right? So you can trust Jesus to get you where you need to go. His rod and his staff, they will lead you, protect you in life. And so why are you not going to fear evil? Because God's with you. Now, you have to learn this because you live in the shadow of death. In other words, everything around you smells of death, sounds of death, media talks of death. And, you know, sickness is a slow form of death. Everything, poverty is a slow form of death. Everything is, smells like death. You have to learn and have to practice knowing him and who you are. Yeah, you know what? You're not going to win in life just by coming to church one Sunday morning, hour, a week. You're going to have to practice this during the week. You're going to have to make a decision that you're going to take the word of God at face value and that you don't have to be afraid. Fear is an enemy to your life. It is an absolute enemy and should be cast aside. Fear is not part of the kingdom of God. It is not part of your future. It is a lie. And you have been trained in it in a perverted culture. You need to understand that you learned it. You weren't born with it. You learned fear. All right? You know, problems demand an answer. It's nice to know you have the answer. Uh, years ago when we were in college, Drenda and I went to uh, Tulsa. We were at uh, Oral Roberts University in Tulsa. And, of course, I like to hunt. And we went up to Kansas hunting with some friends. We were, I don't know what year in college, but uh, in our college years. And so Kansas is like, have they been to Kansas? You know, I always ask where you've been. Kansas. <laughs> and Kansas is pretty flat. You know, you get out there, it's just nothing there, right? <laughs> Ni oh, you remember the year? 1982. Very good, my dear. That's a ways back. <laughs> anyway, so 82. Anyway, so we went up there. We hunted all day, and we, went with, we drove with some friends in an old beat-up Toyota Corolla, something. I just, I don't know, 300,000 miles on it, whatever. But it, it broke down driving back, and it was dark. And here we step out of the car, and there is nothing. Way off in the distance, there's one of those mercury lights on some guy's barn, way, way. So we, we walk up there, and this farmer was so, so generous. He, he invites us in, and Drenda had to start a brand new position, a new job on Monday morning. This is Sunday night. We're about seven-hour drive away. And he says, he, he thinks for a minute, and he goes, I'll drive you home. So he hooks a trailer up, 
puts the old Toyota on top of the trailer and drives us all night, all night. She gets to Tulsa maybe about an hour or so before you have to go to work, I think maybe two or not, not long. And he wouldn't take any money for gas. He was a believer. And, uh, you know, that felt so good to have someone come and rescue us, you know, and to take care of the problem, right? Well, he could have been an angel. Well, the angel had a farmhouse, sweetie, then. I don't know. But anyway. <laughs> but the bottom line is God's with you, and he has an answer for you. And you don't have a need to fear. He'll take care of it, right? He's going to make a way. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. He has delivered us from the power of what? Darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, a new kingdom. Now he's translated us out of the power of darkness. So let me have my illustration. Now I want to talk today about don't make concessions with darkness. Don't make agreements with darkness. You know, because basically you have been set in place in the kingdom of God with the authority of the kingdom, right? You know, but if you have a flashlight, guess what? You just turn it on, right? If you turn the flashlight on, you're not in dark anymore, are you? You know what? Light always wins. Yes. Always. Yes. Over darkness. And you are in the kingdom of light. You have the authority. But here's what we do. So we have a flashlight, but then fear says, what happens if the flashlight doesn't work? Or what happens if the batteries go dead, right? So you buy a second flashlight like this one that you might want to use sometimes. So this one is kind of different. I got to remember how to use it. So you just you don't have any batteries. You can just go around and walk like this. You can just walk and just make it'll never run out. What I'm trying to say is, is if you follow fear's promptings, you'll never get to the end of preparation. Is it making sense? See, we try to build our lives into a place where we can be free from fear and we try to build our lives with walls and preparation so that fear can't trap us. And so, you know, you can keep buying flashlights, you can keep backing up, you can keep preparing for the, the problem. Fear is going to always give you another problem. It's never going to end, right? All right, so you keep preparing for those things and I'm telling you that you have to back up. And we're going to talk today about not making concessions with fear because it's going to hold you hostage. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. So do not fear. For what? There's the same solution. I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is with you. You're not alone. This is why people love the, the Avengers movies, right? Who's seen Endgame, right? I mean, uh, now all the, why, why do people like all those hero movies? Because they're not afraid. They jump right into the problem, and they deal with it. And all those adventures bring their all special talents together, and they take Thanos out, you know? <laughs> Thanos has to go down, man. <laughs> if you haven't seen the movie, you'll, know, you'll figure it out. Anyway, so why do people love that? Because they're, they're afraid. They like to see someone not be afraid. It's like, wait a minute, they're not afraid of that powerful problem. They're like, they just jump right in there. And so we all cheer them on, right? Well, you're God's Avengers. You are God's Avengers. You are to avenge, bring righteousness to bear in situations. You are to set the captives free. You represent the kingdom of God. You are the answer. You are someone's hero. You are someone's hero. Get that through your mind. And heroes think different than victims. You are not a victim. Stop thinking that way. You are a hero. You are God's adventures. You've been anointed by the king of, who made everything you see. You are God's child. He loves you. There's nothing held against you. Your sin is removed as far as the east is from the west. You have been made righteous through Jesus Christ. Stop practicing failure. Stop thinking about fear, right? I was raised with fear. So were you. We all grew up in the valley of the shadow of death. We all grew up thinking how to build the walls around our lives to protect us against the inevitable onslaught of problems, right? Fear, fear, fear. It talks, it talks, it talks. I grew up, my parents had a housekeeper who, this is a true story. It's crazy now that I'm old enough to understand spiritual truths and understand this thing. 
But she would cut out, every day she came to work, she'd cut out the worst story out of the Columbus Dispatch, and she brought it, cut out, clipped out, and brought it to the house and said, did you hear about, and she laid the article down and told us the most horrible thing that happened last night. This went on for years. I didn't think about it. I didn't think how it was affecting me. But guess what? It did, and it was. So I grew up uh, trying to avoid stress. I mean, I was raised with that. So obviously, I, I kind of grew up with an attitude, I'm going to avoid issues. I, I sat in the back of the class. I never volunteered to be in a place that was scary or a place that could be, uh, you know, in, insecu uh, insecure. I, I kind of held back. Because I just didn't, you know, it's just safer that way, right? Anyone else ever feel that way? It's crazy. When I got born again, God, of course, called me to preach. He sent me to college. Now, for me, now this, is, this, sounds, this sounds absolutely, I think about it, just nuts. <laughs> I, I ran my dad's pizza shop here in New Albany and Johnstown growing up. And growing up here, you would think that I would know some things about the area. I didn't go very far. I stayed in this little circle. You know, I'd, it's crazy. I think, I remember I was a senior in high school and we went down to the Ohio River and we crossed the bridge to Kentucky and I remember thinking, wow, I'm in another state. <laughs> you know, I always push you to think about going and seeing things, right? But uh, anyway, I, uh, I just, I don't know why. I told you that I love to hunt. You know, I love the outdoors. I hunted growing up. I ran a trap line. I loved it. I, I subscribed to every magazine there was, talk outdoor life, sports a field. Uh, what's the other ones? Uh, field and stream. All the magazines. And I had uh, back in the day, how many remember? Well, you probably won't. Some, some of you might. Herder's Catalog. If you remember Herder's Catalog, raise your hand. <laughs> no millennials there. <laughs> Herder's catalog was at the day Cabela's catalog. You know, it's about that thick, had all kinds of hunting stuff and gear. And I used to just dream about all that and read it, you know. But weird thing was, I had, I mean, literally I had stacks of these magazines. I would read them cover to cover, but never one time thought about going where they were talking about. Not once. Too scary. Too outside my comfort zone. I was so trained in not expanding my vision that it never even occurred to me to go. I never even had the debate in my mind, let's go. I never even debated, I never even thought, let's go. I never even thought it was pot. I didn't know where I-70 ended. I didn't know it went to Colorado. I never saw the mountains until I was 40. You say, really, you're a sad case. <laughs> I agree, I was a sad case. Well, God called me to go to school in Tulsa. I can still remember driving out there. It's pretty scary. Wow, that's pretty far away. And then I had to go back to college, learn all that. Then he called me to go into insurance sales for a guy who was, you know, afraid of people. I died a million deaths. Man, that was horrible. <laughs> but God had to train me. He had to push me past my comfort zone because my destiny was not where I lived. It was in front of me, and I had to get there. And fear is going to hold you hostage to your destiny. It's going, to hold you, it's going to hold you hostage. You've got to overcome it. And so in sales, you know, I was afraid of people. But I pushed myself, pushed myself, and then lived on commissions. And the stress, uh, all of those things, not knowing how the kingdom operated, of course, just the stress, I woke up uh, basically paralyzed one morning. My arms numb, legs numb, face numb. I mean, just... Basically, my body had enough stress, and I just, it just shut down. Doctors couldn't find out what was wrong with me. I mean, it was, it was a mess. And uh, paralysis, you know, money problems. But I got a, I got a message. All of that was to lay out this, this point. My problem wasn't the paralysis. My problem wasn't the lack of money. The problem that I was dealing with wasn't the problem. Darkness isn't your problem. It's the fear of darkness that's your problem. Let me say it again. Darkness is not your problem. It's the fear of darkness that your, is your problem. Right? It's the fear of darkness that's your problem.